Part 1. We'll hear two friends, Nancy and Fiona, catching up with each other. First, you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Hello, Fiona. I haven't seen you for ages. Hi, Nancy. It must be two years, I think. Has it been that long? It seems like yesterday that we were regularly catching up with each other, on Friday mornings at that cafe around the corner from you. Yes, I remember our chats at Cafe Bellissimo over a nice hot coffee and cake. Do you still work part-time or are you busier now? Well, actually, since I saw you last, I've had a baby girl who's with her grandmother at the moment, so I'm free to pay bills and do grocery shopping. What about yourself? What are you up to these days? Well, actually, I've started my own business, so I'm pretty busy. I'd call it full-time work myself, although the hours are very flexible. Wow, that sounds really fascinating. What sort of business is it? Well, we were initially going to open a shop, but we thought it would be easier to sell our product online. And a market stall would have been too hard to manage. We also thought it would be a great idea to sell, not just in Perth, but all over Australia as well. So what do you sell? We're selling children's costumes from around the world. Interesting. How did you come up with the idea? As you know, Perth is such a multicultural society. At my children's school, there are so many immigrant children. Many of the families find it difficult to get traditional things from their culture, including clothes for special celebrations. With our extensive business travelling over the years, we have made numerous contacts in many countries. You now have 20 seconds to look at questions 7 to 10. Now answer questions 7 to 10. So how many countries' costumes do you sell? At the moment, I have a good range of countries. I have access to 10 from Africa and similarly from Asia with 10 nationalities. I have slightly more from the Americas with 13 and more again from Europe with 25. Unfortunately, I only have six for the Pacific region, but I'm expanding all the time. When do you find time to run your business? Well, that's the problem at the moment. I have so many things to organise, but I don't have enough time to do everything. Do you see an accountant or do you do your tax yourself? I get all of my receipts and expenses together, but then I go to an accountant who fills in my tax return as it takes me too much time. What about your website? You said that your company's growing all the time. Yes, it's true that my website continually needs to be updated, but it only takes me a short time each week to do it. So that is one area I can manage myself. Do you advertise your business anywhere? Where do your customers come from? It's interesting you should ask. Most of my business is word of mouth, but I do hand out a lot of business cards. I get them done by the local printer, although I must admit that they are rather plain. I need to add a little colour when I get time to redesign them in the future. Well, it's been great catching up with you and finding out all about your business. I'm very interested in looking at your website when I get home. Here's my business card so that you can email me for our next get-together. Don't bother about a babysitter next time. Bring your daughter with you as I'd love to meet her. That sounds like a great idea. See you soon. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two.
You are going to hear a conversation between two women about the health system in England. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to seventeen. Now listen to the first part of the conversation, and answer questions eleven to seventeen. Hello, Mrs. Sutton. Come in. How are you settling in next door? Have all your things from Canada arrived yet? I thought I saw a removals van outside your house yesterday afternoon. Yes, they came yesterday. We spent all day yesterday arranging them. It's beginning to feel a bit more like home now. Oh, that's good. Look, come in and sit down. Are you all right? You look a bit worried. Well, I am a bit. I'm sorry to bother you so early, Mrs. Smith, but I wonder if you could help me. Could you tell me how I can get hold of a doctor? Our daughter Anna isn't very well this morning, and I may have to call somebody out. She keeps being sick and. <sighs> I am beginning to get a bit worried. I just don't know how the health system works here in England. All I know is that it's very different from ours back in Canada. Well, I don't know really where to start. Let me think. Well, the first thing you have to do is find a family doctor.、Mm -hmm. Sometimes we call them general practitioners as well. Right. And register with him or her. If you live here, you've got to be on a doctor's list. If you're not, things can be a bit difficult.、Oh. Nobody will come out to you if you're not registered. Anyway, the work in things called practices,、uh -huh. sort of small groups of family doctors all working together in the same buildings. Now, what you've got to do this morning is register with one of them.、Oh. There are two practices near here, so we're quite well off for doctors in this part of Manchester. There's the Dean End Health Centre, about ten、mm, minutes' walk away, and there's another practice in South Hay. That's about five minutes away, going towards the town centre.、Uh -huh. We are registered at the Dean End one, but they're both okay. There are about six doctors in our practice and four in the other, so ours is quite big in comparison, and the building and everything's a bit more modern. South A is a bit old-fashioned, but the doctors are okay. Their only problem is that they don't have a proper appointment system. Sometimes you have to wait for ages there to see someone.、Mm. Anyway, you go to the receptionist in whichever health centre and ask her to register you with a doctor there. You have to fill in a form, but it doesn't take long. Ours is called Doctor Jones, and we've been going to him for years. Ever since we moved here fifteen years ago, I wouldn't say he's brilliant, but、um, I suppose he's all right. Really, we're used to him now. <laughs> They say he's very good with elderly people, but he does tend to get a bit impatient with children. Listen, the one who's supposed to be really good with small children is Doctor Shaw.、Ah. I've heard lots of people say that.、Mm -hmm. She's young and she's got small children of her own, so. You could try registering with her, and if her list's full, I heard somebody say the other day that there's a really nice young doctor at South Hay, a Doctor Williams.、Mm -hmm. He holds special clinics for people with back trouble, but、uh, that's not really your problem, is it? <laughs> Now you have some time to look at questions eighteen to twenty. Now listen to the rest of the conversation, and answer questions eighteen to twenty. If you want a doctor to visit you at home, you have to ask for a home visit. 
You're supposed to do that before 10.30 in the morning, but obviously, if it's an emergency, you can phone at any time, night or day. It might not be your doctor that comes, though. It's quite often one of the other doctors in the practice. It doesn't really seem to make much difference. Right. Otherwise, you make an appointment to see your doctor at the health centre. You usually get seen the same day. Not always, of course, but usually, as I say. The whole surgery is between 9 and 11.30 every weekday and from 4 to 6.30 Monday to Thursday. Saturdays are only for emergencies. I see. When the doctor sees you, he gives you a prescription. He writes what medication you need on it and you take it to a chemist shop. There's one opposite the centre. If it's for a child under 16, you don't have to pay. So if it's for Anna, there's no problem. The same thing goes if you're unemployed or retired or if you're pregnant. Just as well, because it's not cheap. You pay the same price for each item the doctor has prescribed. At the moment, it's something like £5 per item. So you pay for the medication, but the consultation with the doctor doesn't cost you anything. It's completely free as long as you're a resident here. Mm -hmm. You're going to be here for three years, aren't you? Uh-huh. So, well, there shouldn't be any question of you paying anything to see the doctor. Mm. So that's one less problem to worry about. <laughs> Look, Mrs Sutton, if you want, I'll sit with your daughter for half an hour if you want to go down to the health centre to register. It's no trouble, really. Don't worry. Are you sure you wouldn't mind? That would really help me a lot. I'll ask them if they can send someone round later to see Anna. I, I think I'll try the Dean End Centre. Good idea. Don't worry about Anna. Right. I'll be back as soon as I can. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two students called Jimmy and Kathy talking to their tutor about the current research paper. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Before we start, Jimmy and Cathy, thanks for coming in today to talk about your current research paper. Well, I will also give you some suggestions for your future presentation later. That's great. OK, I've read the introductory chapter, and so far I like where you're going with your research, you two. Thanks. What did you think of the procedure section? I haven't got there yet. I'll get to that and the results and discussion section in a bit. Oh, if you haven't read the rest, are you just saying you like the introduction? No, the layout is really well done. You have each section clearly marked and have the header and footer perfectly formatted and your title page is right on the money. A lot of students have trouble with that one. To be honest, we did refer a lot to the example we received in class. That's good to do for spacing and layout, as long as you're not also copying the information. The background information is a little sparse, though. You may want to add to it. You think so? I was more worried about whether I had enough data. You definitely need more background information. I would think about finding some more online articles or doing more research in the campus library. That's a good idea. We can go tomorrow. 
I find it too tough finding the subject matter in the online journal database. I also like being able to flip through the physical journal as opposed to trying to scroll down on a computer. Me too. Oh, I almost forgot. I've included all of my citations in the abstract, but could you help me with the bibliography? I should be using a bibliography, right? Not an appendix. Sure. I can help with that. Yes, for this type of scientific research paper, list all sources that you cite in the body of your paper in a bibliography. Go to the website I gave you last time to see the exact way to list each source. Okay, thanks. I'll do that. We still have a lot of things to fix up. Yeah, but there's a lot of good stuff here to work with. So, enough about the paper. How is the presentation going? Well, it's all right. I'm going to go try out the new presentation software while Jimmy's working on the bibliography. Yeah, we are hoping to make an animation of an actual pump, but still have a lot to learn about how to do that. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 26 to 30. Who would have thought before we started this project that we would be able to recreate the motion of a pump? This stuff is just so interesting. So glad to hear it. Yeah, I am glad I took engineering this semester. I would definitely like to keep up with it. You know, there's an organisation called the Machine Engineer Society. You should look into joining it. You'd need to score well in your engineering class to qualify, but I think you can do it. Hmm, interesting. I will definitely check it out. I would really like to get in contact with some professionals in the engineering field to find out more. I don't really know anyone in the field now, though. I think if you keep meeting people in your classes and professors, you'll, you'll be able to get in contact with some really helpful people. Well said, Jimmy. If engineering pumps is something you both are specifically interested in, make sure you stay up to date on new developments. In fact, you could visit the local water treatment facility periodically to see what new developments are going on. Hmm, that may be a good way to get some practical experience. Well, I don't think they would let you handle any equipment by just visiting the facility. If you really want to get your hands dirty, so to speak, I would recommend instead seeking a summer internship. Wow, you have so many helpful suggestions for getting a leg up. Now, if only you could tell me how to get my work published. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Well, honestly, all you really need to do is, once you have a dissertation, present it. Present it often and to many audiences and once you get feedback, adjust it. You'll get published one day. Wow, this meeting has been truly inspiring. Thanks for your help. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a talk from a series of lectures on the survival of our planet. Professor Samson talks about endangered species of flora and fauna. First, you'll have half a minute to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully to the talk and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today's topic in this series of lectures on our planet is about ensuring the survival of our very important plant and animal species. In this lecture, I want to discuss one way that we can do this. No one will ever see a huge dinosaur thundering through the forest. No one will ever see a paradise parrot flash its rainbow colours across the sky. The fact is that many animals and plants have been wiped out. Sadly, they are extinct. It is too late for them. Extinction is forever. We can't do anything about the species that have already disappeared. But today, there are many animals and plants that could still become extinct in the future if we do not act now. They are endangered. The African elephant and rhinoceros have become endangered because of the value of their tusks. Australian parrots and reptiles are smuggled onto planes because certain people in other countries are prepared to pay thousands of dollars for them. And there are many other species around the world that are endangered because they no longer have a place in which to live and reproduce safely. The main cause of extinction is the destruction of habitats. A habitat contains all that a living thing needs to survive. Space, light, water, food, shelter, and opportunities for reproduction. The population of the world is growing rapidly, and this is placing great demands on land and resources for housing and for growing food. When vegetation is cleared and swamps are drained for agriculture, mining and suburbs, or when rivers are dammed to store water, plants are destroyed and animal life is threatened. In other words, humans are changing and destroying the habitats of animals and plants, which is in turn reducing their chances of survival. So how can we conserve habitats and help save endangered species? Well, one way is to protect their habitats permanently in national parks or nature reserves. National parks have been created in many countries. They encourage people to enjoy the beauty and diversity of the animals and plants that live there without harming them. By supporting and visiting these parks, people can become more aware of the species that live there and how the parks work to protect them. It is very important that, when visiting a national park, we keep them safe for future generations of plants and animals by obeying a few rules. Firstly, follow the fire regulations. Don't throw cigarettes or build fires, except at certain times of the year in especially allocated areas and facilities. Secondly, remember to leave pets at home. Pets, such as cats or dogs, can hunt birds or other small animals. Some pets might even escape and become a serious threat. Thirdly, place all rubbish in a bin or take it home. Plastic bags or leftover food are dangerous to the animals and harm the environment. Don't pick the flowers or damage the plants. Flowers create the next generation of the plant. Also, for the same reason, birds' eggs must be left in their nests. The loss of species in the past is sad. However, there is hope for the future. Despite the demands of our increasing population, we can work to protect the plant and animal species we still have. So I would like to conclude by saying that I believe that, with strong public awareness and support of these national parks and reserves, the future of endangered species can be ensured. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Thank you.